Hey guys, it's Kooji Rolls, and this is a comprehensive review of the InMotion V11. Inside here, there's air suspension shocks. Both the InMotion V11 and the S18 aren't available yet. They'll be available later this summer, but I've gotten the opportunity to test both of them. I'd like to thank my sponsors, E-Wheels and Speedy Feet, where you can pre-order these wheels right now. All right, moving on. Let's take a closer look at this wheel. InMotion has quietly been working on the V11, and it has something most riders have dreamt about, but never thought possible. Suspension. Inside, there's a 2000 watt motor powered by a large 1500 watt hour battery. It specifies a max range of 70 miles and a top speed of 30 miles an hour. The 18 by 3 inch tire is my favorite because it's stable and agile. These are the same pedals as seen in the V10, and I think most people would agree that these are the biggest and most comfortable pedals on the market, and this time, they come with grip tape. And located above is an 18 watt focused headlight, the brightest by far. On the back, there's a first of its kind kickstand. Just above the brake light, there's dual charging ports, which can fully recharge the wheel in about three and a half hours. There's also a USB port to charge your devices. At the top, there's a spin kill button and a foldable trolley handle. It has an IP55 water rating, which means you'll be able to ride in the rain and through puddles, but not submerge it. The listed suspension travel distance is seven centimeters, but I actually measured a little more than eight. I did want to do a little suspension test. Let's go outside. Synced up, I'm at 94% battery life. Let's do a little speed test. Go! Woo. Wow! This thing has serious, serious torque. Responsive. The V10 I felt was a little sluggish, but this this V11 has a lot more torque. Oh! Yeah. Okay. I have to go. I got kicked out of here again. General street performance of this thing is pretty solid. I gotta say, I, I'm been impressed by the suspension. I didn't expect it to work this well. It does eat up a lot of the bumps. I can run over potholes and I can go through the things. I have very good handling. There's no wiggles or wobbles that are occurring. Nice. Big open area. Let's just do a general performance test. The thing 
about the turning is that it's very smooth. With the large pedals, you can get them to scrape. The contact points of like where my shins meet the frame are a little higher than I'd like them to be, but the handling of this thing is really tight. Not bad. So even though it has a pretty big battery pack, it's a slim design. It's only one layer thick of batteries on both sides. So the center of gravity is really close to the tire, which makes it not want to wobble. They did allow two front mounting points for maybe something else to be mounted to this thing. There's a possibility that I can get proper padding on this wheel and get better performance out of it. And if I can, I'll be very happy. These pedals are held up by friction. Now let's talk about the amenities. As always, InMotion has a great spin kill button. So when you pick it up, it doesn't spin. There's a trolley handle, which is under here. There's a little button right here you can press, but it's about the right height you'd want. I like that. It's a one-handed operation, but this thing is tall and heavy. Look how tall this thing is, and it's not fun to carry up the stairs. The kickstand is awesome, and you just got to remember to pick it back up. This is not the direction I wanted to go. I tried to use the sun as a compass. And... There's so many speed bumps around the stadium. Anyway, this is perfect. Try these speed bumps with a straight leg. definitely softens the speed bump quite a bit. If you had a bigger weight attached to the top side, I think the suspension would be much more responsive. And that's where sitting comes into place. All right, inside this backpack, I got a seat. That's good. Sitting with this, this is much more doable. I can do speed bumps sitting down, this is crazy. This is probably the most comfortable seated ride. Uh, I'm gonna give the V11 the award of best seated ride. This is the way to go, man. Woo. This is really comfortable because it's actually much taller. All right, let's go take this to the park. Nice day at the park. Yeah. Sun blue skies. Oh shit. All right, so things gotten a little better in Beijing and uh, I think I'm a little more comfortable not wearing a mask right now but more important question is how does this thing do off-roading yeah. Choppy. They, they, it's not perfectly smooth, but it does do a good job absorbing a lot of those bumps. And I don't have that much experience riding without pads, so this is 
not necessarily the most fair review. I crashed. That's because I clipped my one of my pedals on the on the dirt. I think I need to pump this up a little bit more. Pressure. I have way more clearance to go over things, so I'm less likely to cut a clip, but it doesn't feel uh, as smooth over the bump. That was padding problem. I'm pretty certain if I actually had padding on this thing that this would be a decent off-roader. All right, now let's get the hell out of here. I don't talk about headlights because I'm almost always dissatisfied, but this is the first headlight that I think is good. Not only is it bright, but it's focused and stays down low so you don't blind others. Mm -hmm. Every other powerful wheel out there is kind of fat and clunky. But this one is pretty slim. This is probably very comparable to the MSX in terms of torque. Which is really, um, no one else has been able to do this. It's very controllable, exactly what I'd want it to do. It's not, it doesn't all of a sudden turn harder than you want it to or anything like that. It's just very predictable. The motor control is super smooth. The headlight is amazing. This is the first headlight that I've ever used that I think is acceptable. The suspension works well-ish. Motion suspension is definitely inferior to a design where the tire moves independently. It's just not as responsive. They took the safe route by not having the batteries and the frame separated from the motor to have that wire not flex over and over. And if you're developing something new, you don't want to have that many risks, just more points of failure. But I think King Song managed to come up with a design that can allow it to flex safely because it has a lot of slack. The V11 doesn't officially sell a seat yet. I think they're going to be developing one because it makes complete sense. Ah. I don't know why it does this. I always get like half of what their ideal max range is, which is completely bogus because nobody rides around at 12 miles an hour. But 35 miles is exactly what I would have expected anyways. At the end of the day, the V11 is like better than the V10F in every aspect. I can't think of a single situation where I would be like, I would take the V10 over the V11. Oh wait, if I had to carry upstairs, the pedals are really big and comfortable. Suspension works well enough at a lower pressure that it eats up a lot of those bumps, but if you're just like a regular city commuter and you want to have some fun with some good torque and handling, all of this is pretty solid in the V11. I'd like to thank E-Wheels and Speedy Feet for sponsoring this video. Everything I've heard about them has been very positive. I'm still waiting for the S18, and before I was still waiting for the V11, I decided to make a new ending for my video, so let it go. Ready? <laughs> I'll be careful. Just makes me want to go outside. <laughs>